Devil's Den State Park is located in Arkansas and covers around 2,500 acres of land. The park is littered with numerous sandstone caves, bluffs, ravines, dense forestry and mountainous terrain. This is where 8-year-old Catherine Van Alst would come to disappear on the 16th of June 1946. At the time, she, along with her parents and two siblings, were staying at their cabin within the park. Both of Catherine's brothers were older than her, and together they travelled a short distance to go play without their parents at a nearby dam that held a pool of water. It was never made entirely clear what exactly happened at the dam, but it appears that at some point Catherine had enough and wandered off back to the cabin alone. It was during this walk that she vanished, and in the immediate aftermath, neither the brothers or the parents realised this had happened. That is, until the brothers came home without her. This obviously set off alarm bells, and the family began to look for her. They quickly realised this wasn't going to be an easy feat, and the authorities were called, and the official search effort would begin. Interestingly, the first report of this incident I found came from the Joplin Globe on the 17th of June 1946, who had received a report that a body had been discovered. The search for Catherine continued tonight at Devil's Den State Park, 14 miles south of Fayetteville. A report this afternoon that the child's body had been discovered in the West Fork of White River proved to be unfounded. Washington County Deputy Sheriff said that the child disappeared yesterday while playing near the river. I did briefly look to see if I could find more on that, but I didn't find further mention of a body being discovered so I'm not sure if someone else's body had been discovered, or if this was just bad information. In any case, within a matter of days, there were over 200 people out searching for Catherine, and around 3 to 4 days in, some searchers thoroughly believed that she was still alive. The hope that Catherine may still be living, and may yet be found in the Devil's Den area, was expressed by several in Fayetteville today. R.D. Whiteley, who was among several who hunted in the area yesterday afternoon, said today he gave the child a 95% chance of still being alive. Some might find this next part of interest too. It was recalled that berries and fruits are abound in the region, and that the child may be able to find enough to eat and drink to stay alive. At this point, I came across this diagram which was reported by the Northwest Arkansas Times on the 22nd of June. The diagram is of the general area that Catherine disappeared, with places of interest being labelled A through H. A displays the location of the dam, B designates the lake, and C the deep pool just below the dam which had been drained, dragged and otherwise thoroughly searched. D shows the location of the park area in which the parents' cabin belongs. E shows where the search was centred at Lee's Creek. F shows the point at which footprints were found, believed to belong to Catherine. The small arrow indicates the direction of believed travel. G and H are largely unrelated, but mark a farm home and Ellis Creek respectively. If you were worried, you can set that aside now, because Catherine was found alive and well six days after her disappearance. Let's have a look at some specifics and the moment of discovery. Catherine, barefooted and clad in a play suit, was found alive this afternoon in the rugged terrain of Devil's Den State Park, approximately 5 miles southeast of the spot where she disappeared Monday afternoon. At the hospital, Dr. E. F. Ellis reported she was in good condition, although her body was covered with insect bites and she showed some evidence of shock. A searching party, organised by R.D. Whiteley, heard the child's cry, Here I am, about 3.30pm, in reply to their shouts. First to reach her was Porter Chaddick, Pine Bluff, a war veteran, and a student at the University of Arkansas. A calm thank you was the child's greeting to him, Mr. Chaddick related. Just as calmly, the girl told her rescuers that she had given up hope of being found. She said she had seen no living thing, 
nor has she heard voices of any of the numerous searching parties until today. She said that she had been near the spot where she was found for several days and had been drinking water from a pool and eating berries. At night, she stayed in caves, she said. It's interesting and astounding that she'd managed to avoid the searchers for all that time. However, after doing a little bit of research, I managed to find a location she disappeared from in more detail using Google Earth. The dam being the place she disappeared from, and 5 miles southeast being the place she was discovered. It's when you zoom out that the scale of the situation dawns on you. What's interesting about this is that Google Earth is using air miles. So if that truly was the point she was discovered, that distance is far greater when having to navigate around the terrain because you can't go in a straight line. Also, it's hard to believe that was the place she was found because surely that means she crossed a road or perhaps that road wasn't there in 1946. I honestly have no idea so it'll be interesting to see some discussion on that afterwards. Also just look at the terrain and the density of the forest, there's no way that can be right surely. In any case, leaving that confusion aside, the Northwest Arkansas Times did a great job following this incident and then spoke with Catherine and her parents directly which gave us lots of details. Still thin and sunburned after being lost six full days in the wooded, thicket covered mountains of Devil's Den State Park, Catherine showed few signs of her ordeal this morning in City Hospital. Her mother and father had been awfully scared while she was lost, she said. I was a little scared too, she admitted, but I didn't see any bears. Glad we've got that one covered anyway. I'm not sure if you've seen my coverage on that, but I have a full video dedicated to young people being taken by what they said were bears. It's an interesting one, so I'll link it at the top right now if you want to open a new tab and in the description below. Carrying on. Catherine said it felt pretty good, jokingly, to be famous and in all the newspapers, but not as good as it will feel to get home to Kansas City. I don't like that place, she said, speaking of the area in which she wandered six days and six nights. After losing her way while trying to return to the cabin, Catherine said she just kept walking. I didn't think there would be a lot of people looking for me, but there was. The sheriff said there were 200 people looking for me. There were plenty of people searching for Catherine, but she never heard a voice or saw anyone until she heard R. Whiteley. I was on the mountain by my cave when I heard someone calling. I thought it was my dad. I started down the mountain to find him and met a man who carried me. Once, while lost, Catherine heard dogs, but I didn't know their names, so I couldn't call them. She heard airplanes one day, but never could get out from under the trees to see one. The plane she heard was searching for her. It's interesting about the dogs, because it insinuates that the searchers might have been fairly close at some point, though the dogs never managed to find her scent. She never heard searchers themselves though, and from what she said, she didn't try to get their attention. I haven't read specifically that search dogs were involved here, but I'm willing to bet they were, they usually are. Carrying on, she also made the point that she didn't remember her entire time spent missing. I didn't think anyone would ever find me. The first night, I slept in the grass because it was warmer than a cave, but when it rained, I went into the cave where it was dry. I didn't get very cold. For several days, she doesn't remember exactly how long she lived in the cave near to where she was found. She can't remember all of the days that she was lost. Once, I went into a big, deep cave, but there wasn't any water in the cave and there was something with lots of legs under a rock, so I went someplace else. I slept on a big rock where it was warm. The creature and a turtle were the only living things that the little girl saw during her six days in the woods. Although the region, a game preserve, is filled with wildlife, or in other words, not only did Catherine manage to avoid the searchers, the search dog's nose, she also managed to avoid all wildlife in an area that is apparently filled with wildlife. She must have been a ninja in a previous life. Just to add a bit more confusion, in the same article, which was written after the fact, so all details were made available, they stated this. 
the child was found about seven miles from the dam where she was seen. I am so confused about that point. Surely that's not where she was found. She's crossed mountains and everything if that's the case. I've put together a Google Earth example of what this looked like, so let's have a look. That's pretty much all of the information I could find in regards to Catherine and her disappearance. Thankfully, at the end of this weird and remarkable incident, Catherine was found safe and well, wherever that then was. Anyway, with that, I suppose now is a good time to wrap up and to hand it over to you in the comments below. Please do share your thoughts with me on this one. Finally, I'd just like to wish you a Merry Christmas. I hope you have a great time, whatever you're doing. And thank you for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, or a dislike if you didn't. I'm just looking for your honest opinion either way. I hope that you've had a great day, or evening depending on where you are, and I'll see you in the new year. Be safe guys. Peace.